From the Storm Tracker 33 Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jesse Gunkel with the very latest on potential tropical cyclone number two out there. As you see, very unorganized. They did fly out through the storm. Hurricane Hunter aircraft went out there this afternoon. They found some winds up to about 28 miles per hour, but that still puts it below the classification of a tropical depression. They did have a couple of spin ups out there, but nothing organized quite yet. A lot of loose activity kind of coming around the center of what that possible circulation currently is. You see here they kind of went through the zigzag pattern just to find a center point. They haven't got that yet, so therefore we don't have that center of circulation. That's why model runs are still a little bit off at this point. Again, we could still see that uncertainty in that high category moving forward. Also, as you notice here, we did have some heavy pockets of rainfall today, some scattered showers out there producing some heavy rain and even the potential that we could be seeing some localized flash flooding heading into the evening hours. So again, here again is that very latest. A lot of this deep tropical moisture driving into southeastern Louisiana. A couple bands out there where we had rainfall rates at about an inch to two inches per hour. A little bit of lightning in the mix. Heavy rainfall across New Orleans today. And obviously a lot of areas, if you saw the pictures out, the, out there, had some extreme flooding out there around Magazine Street, Canal Street, a lot of areas around the Garden District, heavy rainfall. Some areas even saw about eight inches of rain. We even had the, a report or two of a tropical funnel cloud out there. So here's the story. That is going to be the potential concern moving forward. Here's what we've got. We've got those winds sitting at about 30 miles per hour, heading west, southwest now at eight miles per hour with this overall system. And as you see here, again, no organization quite yet, but the National Hurricane Center is still looking at some possible intensification overnight at this point. Still some signs. It looks like the upper levels of the atmosphere are going to kind of come into agreement with what's going on at the surface, and if that's the case, the system is going to become a little bit more stacked, and we'll start to see that intensification process, the possibility or formation of a tropical depression heading into early tomorrow morning. So they're expecting those winds to get to about 35 miles per hour by Thursday afternoon. We're looking at winds at about 40 miles per hour. Notice strengthening as we approach the coastline. Winds up to about 65, so a strong tropical storm late on Friday. And then by the time it, we get into a very late Friday going into Saturday, it looks like just before landfall, we could be looking at a Category 1 hurricane before making landfall at this point. But I still want to show you that cone of uncertainty. There's a lot of wiggle room in there. Could slide a little bit further west could even make its way a little bit further east. But with the current track, I want to point out that we do fall on the bad side of the storm. The side where you see most of the heavy rainfall and the strongest winds, we kind of fall into that northeastern quadrant. So just kind of be on high alert as we make our way very close to the weekend. Showing you one model. This is the European model. And as you see here, this is most likely the most strong one at this point, and it has been over the last couple of days. But it is showing you that we could be seeing landfall some time midday on Saturday with the heaviest rainfall, the strongest winds, possibly even hurricane force winds driving through the area up the Atchafalaya Basin and then driving into Louisiana. Luckily for us, it doesn't look like it's going to stall out or park. However, as you notice here, we could see some of those rain bands extending back into the Gulf of Mexico and notice that's even by late on Sunday going into Monday. We still have the potential for heavy rainfall across the capital area. I want to show you another model again, just showing you the comparison out there. This is the GFS model, the American model. This one much weaker, very broad, not as organized. Still the potential for some heavy rainfall as we put this in motion. You'll see that it drives through the area a little bit to the west of us. And then as you see most of that heavy rainfall across southeastern Louisiana, still some of those rain bands extending back into the Gulf late on Sunday and as soon as we step into Monday. I also want to show you another model out there. This is the NAM. And this one drives a little bit further south, keeping a lot of the thunderstorm activity kind of loose, not too organized around the center. However, still some possible rain bands out there. And notice how the structure is a little bit more widespread and spread out. Still that chance that we could see a couple waves of rain. Some of those outer bands kind of scraping southeast Louisiana and portions of the Gulf Coast. And here's our model, the RPM. And I just want to show you too, that it still keeps a lot of that thunderstorm activity. But notice a couple waves, a couple heavy rain bands start out tonight and as we make our way into Friday, Saturday, 
possibly even into Monday at this point. So because of that concern of heavy rainfall out there over the next couple days, we sit under a flash flood watch through Sunday that could get extended into early next week, depending on how much rainfall we see. And obviously here is that latest estimate out there. And you see with the current track from the National Hurricane Center, which is a little bit to the west of us, a lot of that heavy rainfall now sits to the east. Again, we mentioned that heavy rainfall, strongest winds, and that will be just around the capital area from Point Capi Parish all the way down to the coastline. We're looking at anywhere from 10 plus inches of rainfall. Locally, we could even see some higher amounts. That's if that current track holds and it follows a little bit closer to that European model. So here's what we got going on because of a potential hurricane at landfall category one. We're talking Barry. We have a hurricane watch in place from Cameron Parish all the way to the mouth of the Mississippi River. The light pink, that is a tropical storm watch. What I do want to point out, they've issued a watch because we do have the chance for possible hurricane force winds within the next 48 hours. So now is that time to kind of gear up. And I just want to show you the likelihood that we could see some hurricane force winds with the current path right through here. Pretty high here in the capital area. And obviously, if you live down in Acadiana, somewhere around there, Obviously, the odds go up a little bit right along the coastline. So storm surge watches and warnings out there right now under a watch, mainly because we are looking at the potential for a lot of strong winds kind of pushing that water inland from the east to southeast. And again, that's going to be the concern as we could see some areas seen up to above three feet where it normally sits. So further inland, I think it's going to be in that one to three foot category. Waves right now, not much. We're talking only three feet to one feet in some areas. A little bit higher swells closer to land. I do want to point out that we did have a couple of showers and thunderstorms out there that were rather strong. Even a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings throughout the day with a tornado warning out there. But at least at this hour, we remain nice and quiet. So here are those potential impacts with the current path. Again, this is the one the National National Hurricane Center currently is issuing and right now we kind of get the biggest impacts from this system in the Baton Rouge area. So it all starts out Wednesday starting out tonight going into Sunday, possibly Monday. Inland flooding, a very big concern for us. Localized flash flooding, obviously easily seen anywhere from one to two inches of rainfall in a very short period of time. If you haven't done so already, clear those gutters, clear those storm drains in front of your house. You've still got a little bit of time just in case. Wednesday through Sunday, maybe early Monday, depends on how those rain bands set up. The potential that we could spawn a few isolated tornadoes out there, a couple funnel clouds, and we've already seen a couple water spouts out there across Lake Pontchartrain. Friday, Saturday, I think that's when we're going to see our first signs of some possible tropical storm and maybe even hurricane, hurricane force winds along the coast and further inland. Friday going into Saturday, the potential for some coastal flooding. It looks like water levels are going to jump about about three feet above normal, above the ground level, and then going into Friday and Saturday storm surge. And that's mainly a coastal concern. Further inland, not as bad. It looks like it's going to be about one to three feet at this point, but still something that could watch. We have to watch very closely because if we do start to see that intensification happen a little bit earlier in the life process, well, these numbers could really start to jump. However, if that system stays very loose, unorganized, it waits a day or two, we can start to see the system slide further to the west and become more of a concern for western portions of the state and even portions of Houston at this point. So here's the main thing. Looking forward over the next seven days, we're going to have to deal with a lot of rainfall out there. We're going to be on tropics watch 92 out there, 77, 88. And as you see here, temperatures will be cool over the next couple days, but rain chances will be high and we're going to see that rain come in multiple periods. Watch out for some of those rain bands because that's where those totals will really start to add up. So if you don't have a game plan yet, make sure you start it at least at this hour. Social media, again, just watch very closely. Make sure you get a trusted source out there. Refill all those emergency supplies, water, batteries, charge those phones. Have an evacuation plan if necessary, if they ask you. Otherwise, gather all those important documents and have a plan for your pets and obviously for you and your kids at this point. We're going to continue with updates throughout the evening hours. Once we get new information, obviously, we're going to make sure you get it on social media and through our BR Proud app. But until then, make sure you stay safe.